Why am I holding these two paint guns? Um, well, they do about the same. This one here, you need a large air compressor with a large volume, uh, which I happen to have. I didn't always have that. And that's why I always use this in the past, because this, you just need an extension cord. Both of these will spray lacquer. La I sprayed more lacquer with this and I have this. Um, I'll put links in the description to both of them. Another option, this thing. Believe it or not, this is $13. And at first glance, it doesn't look much different than this one, who that's over $200. Uh, same similar adjustments. I couldn't get this one to spray, and it didn't have enough time to mess with it. I'm sure with some cleaning and checking packing nuts, I could probably get it to spray good. And you can do a pretty good job with this, from what I see and hear on the old YouTube. But I don't believe everything you see on YouTube. Why wouldn't I ever use paint again? Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description and maybe one that comes out here on a cabinet build that I used paint. Cabinet paint sold at the Home Depot. And it was torture. Because it wasn't any sort of lacquer, pre-cat or a nitrocellulose lacquer. It was... A waterborne, a, I don't know, they, had, they tacked every name they could think of on this thing. But it had an eight hour dry time between coats. It was ridiculous. It took me like days and days to paint these sections of cabinets. So I highly encourage you to seek out, this is actually a Benjamin Moore brand, this Lenmar. Uh, Sherwin Williams also has, has a brand. I can't get, well I can get it, but I don't feel like driving to get it. It's in their chemical coatings division, uh, which is like a specific store. They don't sell it in their regular Sherwin-Williams stores that's in every shopping plaza. Um, so that's why I went with the Duralac, because I can get this real close to my house. So I think that's, that's the reason for the title. I'm not even sure what the title is yet, but it's going to be something about don't paint your cabinets. The next step in the process is to paint the cabinet doors and the door frame. Uh, once that's done, uh, we can screw it to the, uh, the cabinet, then it'll be done. What I'm doing is just labeling the door inside the, uh, the hinge pocket here. Uh, I will mask this off so that paint doesn't get in there. If it does get in there, it'll reduce the size of the hole and these things won't fit inside anymore. This is the frame. I did put a little marking on the bottom to tell me what's the bottom. Um, what I'm going to do is sand the, the face down, sand my pencil marks off, I'll even sand the back. And then I will fill. Even though these joints here, the glue squeeze out fills them in, I'll take some filler and fill, fill the joints or just smear it over there, as well as the end grain. Uh, on both the top and the bottom and sand some more. I will only take it to 120 
you can see that right there this joint here is the only one for some reason I didn't get any squeeze out and there is a teeny tiny little gap there all these other ones are perfectly tight just a fine line where the seam is but not this one so this is where I'll fill and it, I don't really need to do the bottom because no one's ever gonna see the bottom but um, I will fill this end grain here and sand it smooth uh, as well as the top of course no one's ever gonna see that either but um, oh well I'm doing it anyways five days from now when I'm doing my 15th frame that might not be the case but we're gonna start out trying to do more so that when we finish we're doing just enough I did the same thing to these, um, filled all the, the, the joints, the end grain. Um, you will see the top of the end grain. Well, I gotta sand this one more here. On these ones, when you open the cabinet door. So that's something you wanna pay attention to. Tomorrow. I do it tonight, but I'm a little low on lacquer thinner, and uh, the first coat has to be diluted down quite a bit so that it soaks into the wood. So I'm going to get some fresh lacquer in the morning, and I will spray these with the new spray gun. Yes, I got a new one. I think you're going to be impressed. <laughs> Hopefully you are. Believe it or not, it's the next night, 9 o'clock at night. I have no idea where the last 12 hours went. But I got my lacquer thinner, I got a tack cloth, I gotta get the, my lacquer. I gotta find the lacquer. So I will not leave this workshop until the frame's painted and the doors are painted. Well, this is my setup. I'm gonna paint everything right here, uh, one by one. So I got my paint, I've got my lacquer thinner, Got a tack cloth. I've blown everything off with the compressor. I still will tack it off one more time before I spray. Vacuum the tabletop off. This is the DeVilbis FLG4 finish line. I think that's how you, I think that's how you uh, pronounce it. Online research says this is probably the best bang for your buck. I believe it's just a little over $200. It's an HVLP spray gun. Comes with a regulator on it. The compressor is right over there. I think that's a 60 gallon compressor, 220 volts. Uh, I'm gonna be filtering everything through a filter before it goes into the paint gun. I got this little setup here from Harbor Freight. I think I got these. I got a hundred of these at Harbor Freight. And I purchased about a hundred of these online. I think I got a hundred measuring cups I want to say it was like $15 and it did come with uh, some lids also so what the hell is that it's not mosquito season Got a giant mosquito in here well we'll fumigate here in a second that's what I was gonna say next is lacquer is pretty darn toxic I don't even know if you can spray lacquer in the state of California so I'm gonna be using a respirator even when I'm mixing it the garage door is open there's a fan underneath the garage door blowing air out I have the door on that side open just to get a cross breeze and get the fumes moving the first coat is called a sanding sealer since this isn't paint I uh, don't need a primer the lacquer is kind of self priming uh, this started out clear a clear coat and I'll show you exactly what this is this is the product that I'm spraying.
As it is, it's already quite thin. It's not going to take much to thin this down. So I'm going to start on this piece of wood here. Well, that's it. That's coat number one. It's a light coat. Uh, this will soak in, raise the grain. I will sand it, and then the next coat will be a little less thin. It'll have a little bit higher vis viscosity, or a little lower viscosity. And keep in mind, this is just the inside that no one will ever see. But you want that wood sealed up so it doesn't swell up or shrink on you. Starting to cool off. It's about 65 degrees in here, so I kicked on the heater. Want to keep it up into the high 60s. I'm gonna do my last coat, kind of a flood coat. It's thin down a bit. I gotta put it on and have just the right overlap so that sheens up and wets out and there's no stipple on it. 